by Henry Kendall. By channels of coolness, the echoes are calling, and down the dim gorges I hear the creek falling. It lives in the mountain with moss and the sedges, touched with their beauty the banks and the ledges. Through breaks of cedar and sycamore bowers, struggles the light that is love to the flowers. And softer than slumber and sweeter than singing, the notes of the bellbirds are running and ringing. Bellbirds, the darlings of daytime, they sing in September their songs of the Maytime. When shadows wax strong and the thunderbolts hurtle, they hide with their fear in leaves of the myrtle. When rain and the sunbeams shine mingled together, they start up like fairies that follow fair weather. And straight away, the hues of their feathers unfolden are the green, the purple, and the blue, and the golden. October the maiden of bright yellow tresses, loiters for love in these cool wildernesses, loiters knee deep in the grasses to listen, where dripping rocks gleam and their leafy pools glisten. Then is the time when the water moon splendid, break with their gold and are scattered or blended. Over the creeks to the woodlands have warning of songs of the bellbird and wings of the morning. Welcome as waters, unkissed by the summers, are the voices of bellbirds to the thirsty far comers. When fiery December sets foot in the forest, and the need of the wayfarer presses the stars. Pent in the ridges forever and ever, the bellbirds direct them to spring and to river. With ring and with ripple, like runnels through tines, are the tone by the pebbles and the leaves in the currents. Looking back to a childhood mixed with the sights and the sounds of the wildhood, longing for power and the sweetness to fashion, lyrics with lyrics with beats like the heart beats of passion, song interwoven of lights and of laughters, borrowed from bellbirds in far forest rafters. So I might keep in the city and alleys that the beauty and strength of the deep mountain valleys. Charming to slumber the pain of my losses with glimpses of creeks and a vision of mosses. Thomas Henry Kendall